In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. From the introit for today's saint, Saint Hedwig. She died in the year 1243. From the introit, we hear, Pierce thou my flesh with thy fear. I am afraid of thy judgments. Pierce thou my flesh. Now the fathers, they changed, or they had a different translation. They would say, pierce my flesh with dread of thee. Same thing. Pierce my flesh with dread of thee. Some of the desert fathers would like to talk about that. What's that talking about? What's that referring to? It's talking about taming the flesh. Taming the flesh. Keeping clear of sin. In the hymn for Prime, the priest reads every day, May moderation in food and drink wear down the body's pride. We want to pierce the flesh. Wear down his concupiscences. St. Paul tells us that we need to crucify the flesh with all his concupiscences. He says he's crucified to the world. And he bears the marks of Jesus in his body. So we can think of it like this. We're all going to be stigmatized. You know, it's not just Padre Pio and St. Francis that are stigmatics. Everybody will be a stigmatic, everybody. But there's different kinds of stigmatics. There are those who bear the wounds of Christ and are willing to have their flesh pierced for him. To bear all wounds, to overcome sin and the pleasures of this world. But then there are those who are not willing. So those who are willing, they do it in this life. And if they don't finish it, they're crucified in purgatory. Can't escape it. We need to be crucified. We need to be stigmatics. And those who resist it in this life and say, no, I'm going to live a life of pleasure. Then they go to hell and they're crucified under their own shame forever. So those who love Jesus will be crucified with him unto his glory and to our own salvation, and those who are not will be crucified forever in hell. Everybody will be a stigmatic. There's no escaping it. That's an amazing thing to think about. St. Teresa, our Holy Mother, she was stigmatized. She was stigmatized as the saints are stigmatized. One day, Palm Sunday, as she was detaching from receiving a bigger piece of the host, she was kind of disappointed that St. John of the Cross didn't give her a bigger piece of the host she was hoping for. She was detaching, and Jesus came to her because she detached and she was open to it. He says, now that you've even gotten away from that, I wed thee with the nail from my hand. I'm now going to pierce you with this nail. You're going to be nailed with me on the cross. But the nail always passes through my hand before it will pass through yours. And that brought her into a rapture and an ecstasy that lasted for days. Today's saint fully fulfilled what St. Paul said. For she that liveth in pleasures is dead while she is still alive. She died to the pleasure of this world, so she lived for Christ. She didn't give in to the pleasures of this world. She had her flesh pierced so that she would live with Christ, not be dead to Christ and living to the world, as St. Paul says, is a great danger for us. Listen to the third lesson from Matins for today, St. Hedwig. In order to devote herself more closely to the service of God, she persuaded her husband to agree to a vow of continence for both of them. 
In other words, they took a vow of celibacy. They already had a number of children. Upon the death of her husband, she took the Cistercian habit in a nearby monastery where she was intent on contemplation and took her, her delight in continually assisting at the divine office and at Mass. She was piercing her flesh. Adorned with the highest virtue, most severe penance, wise counsel, and candor of soul, she became an example of the highest religious perfection. She was accustomed to make herself subject to all and to undertake the most menial tasks. She was of the royal family of Poland. I'll do anything. I'll serve you. You tell me what to do. I don't mind. She was accustomed to make herself subject to all and to undertake the most menial tasks, ministering to the poor on her knees and washing and kissing the feet of lepers. Here's one who fulfilled the words of St. Paul. Here's one who pierced her flesh with St. Paul and became a stigmatic. She became a stigmatic. She pierced her flesh, flesh in dread of thee. Now that brings us to the motivation of why we want to have our flesh pierced. Because we should be afraid of his judgments, as the psalm verse says. Pierce my flesh with dread of thee, I am afraid of thy judgments. Scriptures say that he who meditates on his end and keeps his end in mind does not sin. If we're thinking about God in the end, as the gospel said, there's this net and it gathers everybody in and the good are cast out in fire. And the good or the bad are cast out in fire, sorry. And the good are taken away to be with God. We have to think about that all the time. Every day that should be before our mind. If you know scripture, you know that Every single verse of Scripture has what is called an anagogical meaning. Anagogical meaning means it has something to do with the end, something to do with the destiny. So every single verse of Scripture is pointing somehow to the very end. Well, that we can take that and say, apply that to our lives. We can say, every single one of my actions needs to be ordered to the end. To my end, to God, to my death. Stop and think about it a little bit. We're going to be judged. Pierce my flesh, for I'm afraid of thy judgments. We're going to be judged. So we need to meditate on that frequently. I'm going to be judged. I'm going to be naked before God and I'm going to be naked before myself. All the things that I hid from myself. We're pretty good at that. We can hide things from ourselves. That's why St. Teresa says, never leave the path of self-knowledge. Find out about yourself. And when someone was too comfortable, she would go and disturb them so they would find out about themselves. We need to find out about ourselves. It'd be a terrible thing to come before the Lord at the particular judgment upon our death and not know ourselves and to be shocked. Oh my goodness. I did these things and that's me. Yeah, I can't deny it now. I've been hiding it from myself all these years. But that's not everything. The general judgment, hmm? The general judgment won't just be nudity before God. It'll be nudity before everybody, the whole entire universe. We're all going to go in front of everyone. And our whole life, every one of our actions is going to be on display. Keep that in mind when you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. You think to yourself, I'm going to be before the whole universe and they're going to see this. Do I want to do this? Absolutely not. I want to do an action that will please God and everybody be going, wow, look what that guy did for God. He gave glory to God. That's how we should be thinking. All of our actions should be like that. They should be actions that are for God that will bring him glory on the day of judgment. Now, how are we going to do that? We have to think about it. We have to meditate on it. 
It has to be part of our life. That's what meditation is. We make it part of our life. We take this truth that's a real thing and we say, I want it to be real for me too. This psalm that we read from, this we're taking all of our meditation from this morning, Psalm 118, that's the longest chapter in the Bible. It's somewhat repetitive, but in a beautiful way. In fact, someone named this this psalm, the Rosary of the Psalms, the Rosary of the Psalter. One of the places in this rosary, one of the beads, you'll hit this line. It says, I hid your words in my heart that I might not sin. I hid your words in my heart that I might not sin. St. Therese, she, whenever she was struggling with something, she'd take up the Gospels and she would look at it and she'd take that word and she'd put it in her heart and she'd overcome that thing. No matter how big it was, no matter how hard it was, she would conquer it. Let's put it this way. She wouldn't let it get big. She would do it while it was small. That's the little way. Conquer yourself while the faults are still small. Well... We need to meditate on these things. We need to make this real to ourselves. Put it into your heart that there is a judgment and not just between you and God, but between all of mankind. That will stop you from sinning. You'll think, no, I don't want to do this. It'd be too embarrassing in front of everybody. What will I think of this before everyone at the end of the world when my turn to be on display comes up? Hmm? Little children, they avoid sin because they're afraid of their parents discovering it. And if they do sin, they get caught, they get, their, their flesh is pierced. Hmm? And then they say, I'm not doing that again. Okay, we get older, we think, ah, I don't have to worry about my mom and dad. I can do what I want. That's true. But you have an old, you have God the Father and Mary your mother. And you have your parents who are watching you and they see everything you do. Let's have fear of them, a healthy fear, a fear that pierces our flesh in a way that puts it to death, as it were, but brings our soul to life and brings it closer to that mystical marriage that St. Teresa our Holy Mother experienced. That's what the scriptures are saying. Put the flesh in its place so that the soul can rise and it'll be pierced with that pleasing piercing of Jesus' nail in the mystical marriage. Pierce thou my flesh with fear of, of thee. I am afraid of thy judgments. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.